Uh, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss a uh, video on basically corollary theorems that arise from the mean value theorem. And you could uh, basically see my earlier videos on mean value theorem, which I introduced and went over examples. But basically, corollary means just um, adding upon or, or basically that build upon the main theorem here, which is mean value theorem. So, quickly recap on the mean value theorem. Uh, basically, if we have y equals f of x and the following is true, f is continuous on a closed interval a and b, f is differentiable on open interval a and b, then there is a number c in a and b such that you'll have it like this, where the derivative at c is equal to just rise over run f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. Through, like Basically, it's going to be the average slope of the uh, interval. And so what this means is that a number c in between here, like this graph shows, has to have the same derivative, this f prime of c, as the overall, like from point A to point B, uh, slope right here. So this has the same slope as this, or the same derivative. So basically the mean value theorem can be used to establish some of the basic facts of differentiable calculus. And one of the theorems we can get from this mean value theorem is this corollary theorem 1, I'll just call it that. It's uh, if f, uh, f prime of x equals 0 for all x at interval a and b, then f is constant on a and b. Yeah, and basically the way to understand this theorem, a, a good idea is to draw it first. So basically if we start at a to b right here, let's say we have f of a is right here. So that's f of a. So but now if the derivative is 0, it's going to be a horizontal line. So this is a visual kind of proof. Is, is if it's going to be horizontal, then basically this whole thing's going to be constant right here. And at this point right here, you're going to have basically, uh, this, yeah, it should, be, it should be all the same value, or f of b equals f of a, if it exists at the, at the end points. I'll, I just won't write that. So it, as you can see, it should be the same value for all of f. So f equals constant. As you can see, it should be like this. But to get a concrete proof, we could apply the mean value theorem. So the first thing we should do is let's just pick any two numbers. We'll call this point right here x1 and this point right here x2 right here so uh, at this point right here it's because this is an open interval at a and b it, uh, f does not have to, uh, does not have to exist but inside it does so at x1 to x2 that's going to be a closed interval right here so x1 x2 this f exists right here yeah, so it exists or it's continuous at every point. Basically, that's the same thing as, as existing. So now we're also given that derivative is zero everywhere. So then basically in the open interval x1, x2, yeah, the, basically then this open, open interval, the derivative exists. It could be closed, but the, it doesn't matter. Closed and open is the same thing. Open just means it doesn't have to be uh, true at the endpoints. So basically, if you scroll up, we have these two conditions. We have y equals f x, and the following is true, f is continuous and is differentiable on these in, on this interval. Thus, we need to have a number c anywhere in between. So the c right here where we'll get f prime of c is equal to yeah, f of x2 minus f of x1 all divided by x2 minus x1. So basically our a and b, are we're just switching over with this x1 and x2. So we have this one, but we're given that derivative is 0 everywhere. So we just plug this is 0. So if this is 0, to multiply this out, it's going to be 0. So we'll have to have f of x2 minus f of x1 equals to 0. Or in this case, this is going to be basically f of x2 equals to f of x1. And remember, these numbers we picked x1 and x2 are arbitrary. Thus, this proves that it's constant. Again, if I write this down, basically x1, x2 are arbitrary, it be, so it can be any number in a and b. Thus, this proves that f is constant, so it doesn't matter what this is, they're going to be the same value. So f is going to be constant, it's going to be a straight line, straight horizontal line. Yeah, and now a corollary theorem, uh, I'll call corollary theorem 2, which is corollary to this exact theorem, which we just went over, states basically if f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x in an interval a and b then f minus g is constant on a and b and that is basically f of x equals g of x plus c where c is a constant so basically this theorem we can grab this right from this one this is dealing with derivative is zero but now we're d dealing with when it could be any any kind of function right here and, and the proof for this one is pretty straightforward if we let capital f of x 
equals 2 f of x minus g of x. Derivative here is going to be f prime of x equals 2 uh, yeah, f prime of x minus g prime of x. And now we're given that they're equal, so we're subtracting by the same. So this just equals to 0. So if these equals to 0, then we have the exact same theorem right here, where the derivative is 0 for all x in interval. Then f is constant. So then in this case, we'll have f is constant. Yeah, so f is constant, but we know that f equals 2, basically f of x minus g of x. So then this val these two values are a constant right here. So these equals to a constant. And basically the way to understand what this is saying is that basically, let's say if you're from A to B, you have, let's say, your starting point for F is here, and it goes like this, etc. But the starting point for, let's say, we'll call this F. And now let's say we start from here for G. So then let's call, uh, so then if this derivative is the exact same, it has to follow this exact same thing. So if derivative is the same as g of x, it's going to follow this exactly. And then it's, yeah, so as you see, the, the curve is going to be followed exactly. And then this difference, so if we call this g, this difference right here is constant. And this difference, uh, this is just uh, f minus g or g minus f. So you can see this has to be constant every everywhere you go. So then even at this point, it's going to be the exact same constant, constant, so all these are constant. Yeah, so anyways, that's all for today. I'll you learned from uh, this video on basically how to get basic uh, corollary theorems from the main theorem, the mean value theorem. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the link uh, below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.